in the past few weeks, we have discussed a number of the statistical concepts which is very important and also have learned how to calculate the parameters and also the basic statistics. So now we're going to a new topic which is very important, which is a basic for all the statistical analysis, which is hypothesis testing. So after this lecture and after a few exercises, you will be able to explain the key concepts in the hypothesis testing. So there are a few new concepts you have to learn in addition to what you have learned in the previous lecture, which is a confidence interval, what is a statistical hypothesis, p-value, and type 1 error. So you might have seen this term before. So it's very important that you understand uh, the meaning of each of this. And after that, we are more or less ready to go. So we're going to uh, study in detail what is a procedure when we want to do a hypothesis testing. Okay, So there's a step-by-step -step procedure which we have to follow regardless which statistical analysis that you use. This is the outline of the lectures. So first we talk about confidence interval for population mean. Then we discuss about hypothesis testing. And after that, p-value and type 1 error. So confidence interval. So we have discussed briefly about this in the last lectures. So in this lecture, we'll discuss more in detail. So what is confidence interval for population mean? So let's say this is our population, where you see the blue dot in the green color circle. Okay. And for a population, we have a number of observations in our population. So it's a value or data. And also we can calculate the parameter that describe our populations. Okay, So the parameter that we use usually is a mean and standard deviation. And when we plot all the data, then we will have the normal distributions okay, for the scale data. And the mean and also standard deviation is a measurement of center of tendency and the measurement of dispersion. And we also learned in the last lecture about the sample so, and sampling, what is the difference between population and sample. So in most cases, it is quite mm, difficult to calculate the mean and also the standard deviation for the entire population. So what we do actually, we sample a number of observations Okay, so what we call a sample is a subset of a population that we took from population. And in the sample, we have a sample size, so it's a number of observation. And we can calculate the mean of the sample and also the standard deviation of the sample. So we also discussed in the last, le last lecture, we use sample to estimate population parameters. So we need to have a measure on how good of the estimate are likely to be. For example, now we have a population. We don't know the parameter and because it's impossible for us to get all the data. So we took a sample and then after that we calculate the mean and also same division. So we use this as an estimate for the population parameter. But at the same time, we also need to have a measure on how good of the estimate. So how good of our estimate likely to be? So there's some measures, what we call the position and confidence. So we need to measure the position and also the confidence. And this is what we call the confidence interval. Okay. So just like the mean and standard deviation, so the confidence interval can be calculated after we have obtain the statistic for the central of tendency, which is mean, and also statistic for sample, which is the standard deviation for dispersion. So let's say this is our example. So this is a population of 100 students, and the, we measure the body height, and then we calculate the mean of the population. So let's say this is the mean of the population. 
and we calculate the standard deviation of the population. Then after that, we took a sample and also we calculate the statistic, the mean of the sample and also the standard deviation of the sample. So as you can see, and what we have discussed in the previous lecture, there is always a discrepancy, the difference between the sample mean and also the population mean. So the next question is, we need to have a measure to give us some idea how good of our, our estimate by using the sample statistic. The confidence interval is the interval estimate of population parameter. So we have an interval. So based on the sample statistic, we can calculate the interval. And then what is the probability of our population mean will be in the interval. So for example, in this case, our population parameter is 160.3 cm for mean. Standard deviation is 7.96. Okay. And for our sample, this is our statistic. This is a sample. So our sample consists of 20 observations and this is a mean of the sample, this is a standard deviation of the sample. We want to calculate 95% confidence interval for the sample. It means that how frequently the observed interval contains the parameter. Okay, how frequently. So first we need to calculate the standard error. Okay, so the standard error is the distribution, the, the standard error is the dispersion measure of the distribution of sample means. So we need to get the standard deviation of sample, which is 7.10 divided by square root 20. Okay. Then after that, we will get the value for standard error. Okay. So we have our mean. So for just imagine, so this is the green color here is our population mean which in most cases we don't know. So just assume that now this is a population mean okay, that we know. And this is a sample mean. So this is a sample mean. So 158.2. Okay. So what we need to have is to have a 95% confidence interval. So we need to have an interval. Okay, we need to have an interval. So how to calculate the confidence interval? If the confidence interval is stopped here. Okay, then that means that uh, this mean is not fall in the 95% confidence interval for this sample. So if the confidence interval is here, let's say, okay, that means that the confidence interval for the sample, okay, contain the population mean. So this is a formula how we calculate. So this is our population mean, okay. And then this is the sample mean, and this is our standard error. So the 95 confidence, uh, 95 percent confidence interval is this one, okay. It's from here to here, okay, 95 percent. So we need to refer to the standard normal curve or standard normal table. So for two tail, okay, 95% for the Z value is 1.96. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to put the value sample mean 158.2 minus 1.96 multiplied by the standard error 1.59 that we calculate just now. Okay. So this is the lower bound of our interval. Then on another side is plus, okay, it's a mean plus 1.96 multiplied by 1.59. Okay, and this is our the upper bound of our confidence interval, 95%. Okay, because 1.96 is 95% of the probability. So we just solve the calculations of each side then we will get the value. Then after that, we just plot the interval. So the confidence interval is uh, is is a is help us to 
determine how frequently the observed interval contain the parameter. So just imagine that if you have sample 20, okay, so this is how it look like. As you can see, some of the sample does not contain the population mean. So you can see it's outside of the confidence interval. Okay, yeah, but in most cases, they are in the inter confidence interval. Okay. So let's say, let's say in the scenario of 100 sampling with a sample size of 20, so each of the sample with 20 observation. So you can see that there are quite a number of the interval that did not contain the parameter. So for example, this one, this one, so you can see it's outside. So the, the population is not in the interval. So this is a simulation. So you can you can do it by yourself. So you just do it manually. So this is done by computer and software. So it's a bit easier. So you can see it's four out of the 100. Okay. So this is how frequently. So it's 96 by 100. So it's about 96 percent. Okay. It's very close. So this is with the sample size of 20. So as we discussed before, if you have a larger sample size, your estimate will be better. So in this case, it's the same scenario. Just imagine that we have a population and we sample, then calculate the sample mean and also standard sample standard deviation. Then after that, we calculate the confidence interval for each of the sample. Okay. So let's say we have done 100 sampling for the same population. So this is how it looks like when you have a sample size of 40. So here you also can see some of the sample confidence interval does not contain the population. So we can just go through it quickly and see which one is not. So only one. So it's 99 out of 100. So the larger the sample size, the more reliable our estimate will be. There are a few things that you have to remember. First is how to calculate calculate the confidence interval. Okay. And also what is a confidence interval? The concept and also the definition.